Mitchell and Ness have just released a brand new set of jerseys called the Power Play Series. Except it's not really a new set of jerseys. It's pretty much just a rebranded, upgraded version of their Blue Line series that they had. I think it was a year and a half ago now. If you guys don't know about the Blue Line series, there's a reason why they're rebranding. It's because they were not received very well whatsoever by the fans. People really hated on them. I did make three videos about them, so I'll leave a link to all of those in the description down below if you want to check it out. But to kind of give you a too long didn't watch, those jerseys were really, really bad. They had vinyl crests and logos and numbers that just didn't not look good whatsoever the colors were off on a lot of those jerseys as well and just little aspects of those jerseys were also just incorrect they were not done properly at all they were really really bad jerseys and they were really expensive so fans really did not like them when they first came out now a few months later they did make a little bit of a change to it and kind of give it a second generation of sorts where they upgraded the logos as well as the numbers and patches with twill and embroidery and they looked a lot better that is for sure however they only made a couple of of them and it was just of like I think five or six different jerseys themselves. Most of them were Edmonton Oilers jerseys. I think one of them was a Dallas Stars jersey and there might have been another team in there as well but it was basically pretty much just the Oilers jerseys that they kind of upgraded there. So it was a good thing to see that. I was a little bit more excited because I was like, okay, are they doing a second generation? Are they going to redo all of these jerseys? I was kind of hoping that was going to be the case. And then after a little while, I was told that the Blue Line series was completely pulled off of Mitchell and Ness's site. And I went and checked there myself and I was like, yep, it is gone. Now they were still selling the jerseys at different places like Dick's as well as Ice Districts, which is the Oilers, you know, official team store. I think Ice Districts still has some of them. I wouldn't be surprised. That is for sure. But yeah, like I said, the official site, Mitchell and Ness's site, no longer had the Blue Line series. And I had heard previously that we were going to be getting the second generation in October. And at the time that it was pulled, it was in like June or July, something like that. So I was intrigued to see where that was going to go, which of course leads us to today where we have the power play series. So is this new series better than the blue line jerseys? Did they do a good job with the revamp? That is what we're going to be taking a look at. So before we do jump into it, if you guys are new to the channel and you like hockey jersey content, please make sure to subscribe. Let's get into it. All right, so the first jersey that I want to look at is this RoboPen jersey. Now, I'm going to go a little bit more in depth with this one here, and then we'll just take a quick look at some other jerseys. But with this one, the first thing that I want to talk about is the actual shape of the jersey. I don't know if it's just me, but it looks really weird. Like, it looks very rectangular and not boxy because, you know, the authentic jerseys are boxy. This one looks rectangular and maybe it fits fine I have not tried any of these jerseys not even the blue line jerseys in person I've only seen one of the blue line jerseys in person and I did not like those whatsoever uh, but I've not seen a power play jersey in person yet so maybe the fit itself is fine but it just looks really strange with this jersey here and well the rest of the power play jerseys all look like this as well but maybe it's just how they took the pictures I I, I don't really know we'll, we'll give it a pass it's just something that I wanted to talk about the main issue that I have with this jersey is that it's not correct like this is not how the jersey looks if you guys know your robo pen jerseys you would know that they're supposed to be a white stripe at the top and bottom of that middle torso and it's on there for the left side of the jersey you know if you're wearing it but not on the right and I don't know why that's the case it's very strange if we even take a look at the back of the jersey you can see that white stripe at the bottom just stops completely and it's a hard stop it looks not very good to be honest on top of that as well those stripes are supposed to be a lot smaller I don't know why they're that thick so it's just not how the jersey looked at all. I, I really don't get how that is wrong. You would think that they would look at those older jerseys and go, oh yeah, okay, that's how it looked. Like, it's just very strange to me that that is incorrect. So that aspect of this jersey is not very good at all. If we take a closer look at the logo though, we can see that it is an actual, you know, embroidered logo and everything like that. So the logo itself does look pretty good there. That is a positive. It looks a lot better than the blue line crests. That is for sure. So that is a huge positive. Our next picture here is just of the C. Once again, looks like stack 12. So that is I don't think the proper customization, but at least it's not just the vinyl like it was on the blue line and another picture right here of just the customization. Now, another thing to add with the customization is that with this jersey here, it should be Glacier Twill. This is just regular white twill, so it's not the proper customization in terms of that aspect at least. And 
I might give them a little bit of a pass for that because at least I've heard that the actual factory that makes Glacier Twill is no longer a thing. They have run out of Glacier Twill. They can't produce any more Glacier Twill. That's at least what I've read. I don't know if that's 100% correct. So if you guys know for sure, you know, you can correct me in the comments down below. But I've heard that Glacier Twill is basically not a thing anymore. Maybe they couldn't get Glacier Twill. So I'll give them a little bit of a pass on that. Uh, and then we can take a look at just, of course, the tag that's in the bottom left of the jersey there. And it, it's a really big tag. I, I don't like how big it is, honestly. I think it's not bad in terms of the design and everything like that, but I think I would much prefer it in the inside of the back of the collar, not on the bottom left of my jersey, because I really don't like when manufacturers have that tag in the bottom left of the jersey. The only time that I did not mind it was actually the Adidas button, because it's just kind of fun to play with. So I actually like the Adidas button, even though it only lasted a year. But with like the Reebok Premier tags, I don't like those, and I don't really like this one here either. It's just way too too big, way too distracting. It looks really, really weird in my opinion. So yeah, not really that great with this jersey here. Let's move on to another jersey that I want to quickly take a look at. This one here is the Colorado 2001 to 2002 jersey. I just want to look at this one because of the actual word mark. And you can see if you zoom in, it does actually have like a reverse kiss cut logo, or at least the letters are reverse kiss cut, I guess I should say. So that is good. That looks really, really nice actually. So I'm going to give them a positive there. A few other ones that I want to quickly complain about. They had these issues in the blue line series and they had these issues in this one here as well. Uh, the Hartford Whalers jersey, that logo is way too small. Like I said, that was an issue on the Blue Line series. It's an issue on this one. And also with the Detroit Red Wings 2009 Winter Classic jersey, that five still is not where it's supposed to be. That is way too high up for that number five. It should be a lot further down. So not great. I, I don't know why they didn't fix those issues. And I think maybe even the Pittsburgh RoboPen uh, had the issue on the Blue Line series as well. So it's strange to me that they had these issues on the Blue Line jerseys, which is why they upgraded the crests and changed the name of the actual series, because uh, they wouldn't have done that if they did not hear all of these complaints and all of that backlash. But they heard that they obviously made a little bit of a change but they still kept a lot of these issues, and I don't really understand that at all. I, I guess it's just laziness. It doesn't look good, that is for sure. Uh, another one that we can take a look at. This one, I am interested to see how it looks in person, because I think the most viral photo that came out of that Blue Line series was this one right here, where it had the San Jose Sharks logo so far down. Like, that is a ridiculous... It just looks so stupid. It looks so stupid. It looks so bad, uh, and I can't believe that they actually shipped out that jersey. It's pretty insane. So, I'm interested to see how this 2003 to 2004 jersey ends up looking like if it does actually, you know, have the same issues as that jersey. Uh, although I think that one was a little bit more of a one-off, but still, I'm I'm intrigued to see if that happens again because that would be really funny if it does. Uh, I don't think it's going to happen. I guess we'll kind of have to see though. Another one that I want to talk about is this Red Wings jersey. This one is strange because they're saying it's from the 2001 to 2002 season and it has Brendan Shanahan on the back. However, this is obviously not the jersey from 2001 to 2002 because that's not the logo the Red Wings used during those seasons. They did use this jersey at one point, or at least use that logo at one point, and that was basically during like the 80s, which they do have an 80s Stevie Y jersey from the 83-84 season with that logo. That is accurate, but this Brendan Shanahan one is not because he didn't end up playing with the Red Wings until 1996. So he never actually wore the jersey with this logo here, and like I said, it's definitely not from the 2001 to 2002 season, so... I don't know what's happening there. I, I guess they thought, eh, it looks close enough, even though the logo is a little bit different. It's just basically recolorized. So they thought it was fine and just decided to throw it on. Or maybe they didn't want to make a separate crest and they already had the crest from the Stevie Y jersey. So they're like, eh, we'll just throw it on this one. It's very, very strange. And the last one that I want to look at here is this Tampa Bay Lightning 2013 to 2014 alternate jersey. I just want to look at this one because I think this looks awful. Like this is the worst looking jersey in this power play line. I, it's just... It's not a very appealing jersey in my mind in the first place. I do not like the original version of this jersey, but this is so much worse. Like, the bolts look so small and so squished together, and the kind of stripe, the pinstriping that kind of goes from the top of the shoulders down to the uh, torso there, that looks way bigger than it should be, like, way, way further in to the chest area, and especially the back of the jersey as well. Like, it's almost like pushing up against the numbers, which is definitely not what it's supposed to do. I mean, it does come somewhat close to the numbers on the actual jersey, but not this close. That is for sure. Yeah, I, I just I wanted to laugh at this jersey because yeah, it's it's awful. It looks really, really bad. I do think it makes the power play series look a lot worse than it actually is, even though 
I'm going to be honest, I, I don't love this power play series. I don't think it's that much of an improvement on the blue line series. It's great that they upgraded the crests and the patches and the numbers. That is all awesome. Very, very happy with that. I'm glad that they listened to fans. However, there's still a lot of issues with these jerseys. Like I said, the striping being a little bit weird on that RoboPen jersey, the logo not being right on the Hartford Whalers one, and there's probably a lot of other jerseys that I just missed the actual accuracy of, like, and I maybe didn't see it, and that's why I don't really recommend buying these jerseys is because maybe there is an inaccuracy with one of the jerseys that you're buying and you just don't know it and then you find out later on and you're probably going to be really let down if that does end up happening so especially at the price point that they're at as well they're $225 American that's a lot of money for these jerseys where like I said there's just so many inaccuracies so many issues with them and they just look a little bit off as well they just don't quite look right at least in my opinion I would even say with a decent amount of these jerseys you can find the actual real thing for less than 225 American. Now, some you can't. Like, for example, there is a 2016 Colorado Avalanche Stadium Series jersey with Nathan McKinnon on the back. You probably won't find that one for less than 225 American because that one is quite rare. However, even with that one, the customization is not correct. It just looks a little bit wonky with the font. The rest of the jersey itself does look fairly good. Like, it looks fine, but it, it still just doesn't feel right. And at least in my opinion, these jerseys are not worth that price point whatsoever. It, it's it's nice that they are, you know, making that vintage line, but there's just too many issues in my mind to really be able to recommend these jerseys. I, I just don't think they're worth it. Even if they go on sale, I'm definitely not going to pick one up. That is for sure. You know, if you want to go for it, obviously it is your money. But for myself personally, I don't even know if I would recommend buying one of these jerseys for like $75 American. I still think that is a little bit too much. So it's really unfortunate that this power play series is not really that much better than the blue line series, at least in my opinion. I was really hoping that they would improve it, especially once they kind of, you know, got rid of the blue line series on their website. I was, you know, expecting maybe a wholesale change and have it kind of be a lot better and obviously not the case. Yeah, those are just my opinions. I would love to hear what you guys think in the comments down below. Do you think differently than me? Maybe you think that these jerseys aren't all that bad, and maybe they're worth the 225 or at least a little bit under that. I would love to hear that in the comments down below if you guys do agree or disagree with me, but if you guys like this video, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, follow me on all my social medias, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!